Hello, this is a discussion about Palestrina's Mass for Pope Marcellus, or Nisa Papai Marcelli. Uh, he was Italian, so the original title would have been also in Italian, although the lyrics remain in Latin. Uh, that is the official language of the Roman Catholic Church, and Palestrina was a really devoted Catholic. Uh, it's it, He came along at a time period, his, his his real importance has to do with the fact that he didn't do anything so revolutionary. Again, uh, Renaissance music, people are starting to invent little ideas, they're coming up with new clarity, they're coming up with new things that are so novel in the history of the development of music that they stick, even though I think for contemporary ears, they're just not that big a deal. So don't think that you're going to hear anything super, super revolutionary in this clip. Uh, his music is beautiful, but one of the things that he did was actually, um, he sort of capitalized on the idea that less is more. So we're not going to be hearing any sort of really cool new uh, um, invention so much as what Palestrina did was clean up the polyphony. So just a quick little background, which is that during the Protestant Reformation, the Catholics were being assailed uh, from a lot of people that were sort of turning their backs on the religion. They were saying, you know, the, the religion had become too powerful. It was dominant. People were selling indulgences. It was kind of cheapening the sense of religion. People were getting disgusted. You know, people don't put up with a lot of things when you're being told from various circles that a particular religion is a sham or something is not what it was presented. People are going to get upset and they're going to turn their backs. And the Catholics for the longest time were sort of like, well, that's OK. You know, we've got a lot of Catholics. So a couple of people here and there that are turning their backs, no big deal. But then entire countries, you know, King uh, Henry VIII was sort of like, okay, well, I want to divorce my wives and I don't like this, so I'm going to become Protestant. And when something like that happens, the entire country follows suit. It's not like everybody else is like, oh, hey, the king, he did this thing. Well, we're just going to ignore him. You know, he's a powerful guy. And so people start following what he's doing. So the church was very anxious um, about reinstating its power. And in some way, I mean, they did that just by killing people as they did in the uh, um, the Inquisition, you know, just basically root out all the people who aren't Catholics and get rid of them. So that's one way, but uh, a much less violent, bloody way is to address issues in the church that are deemed problematic. And one of the bigger issues in the church that was deemed problematic is the polyphony, which sounds crazy because it's beautiful, but a lot of people within the church were saying the the polyphony has become more important than the music itself. And the message should be the most important thing. The most important thing when people go to pray is they should be reminded in the church of the power of God, the power of Jesus, the power of Mary, the importance of these figures, these deities to daily life and to our worshipers. And the polyphony is distracting people from that it's it's making sort of a secular basis for what should be reverent and holy. And really what uh, Palestrina did was prove that you could have polyphony, but you could have it be sort of straightforward and simplistic and that that could work. And he managed to convince the church and he was heralded. He's often referred to as the, the savior of church music, the savior of Roman Catholic church music. So I'm going to play this and maybe I'll have some comments, but maybe we'll just listen. Really, all you need to focus on here is the fact that this is really simple and straightforward. So let's think about how that could possibly be. How does he do that?
Now, some of it is just in the repetition of the words, right? So we're seeing this is a section of the mass. This is this is one section of a of a much larger mass. This is conveniently, as you can see by the lyrics, the Kiri Eleza, the Kiri section of the mass. I believe it's the first section of the mass. But again, as a non-Catholic, I can't speak to that. But the segments of the mass are presented every single week in a particular order. And this is the Kyrie Eleison, and Palestrina is essentially just making it very, very clear by having tons of repetition. Okay, very good. That was the Kyrie Eleison. We've spent like a whole, what, couple of minutes Just saying the same thing and I bet he's gonna do it again right so here this is an imitative polyphony you can see here's one line then the next line comes in then the next line then the basses so we're we're staggering you know sort of sort of this very simple but again they're basically saying they're they're singing very slowly and reverently on one lyric one line right Curialeson Christe Eleison and in the repetition of the words and the deliberate way that they're singing. They're getting the point across. He's retaining the polyphony. He has simplified the sound in certain ways. It's just not that busy. There's no imitative, uh, sorry, this is all imitative. There's no non-imitative polyphony. Non-imitative polyphony gets very, very busy. If everybody's singing at once and they're singing three different melodies with three different, completely different lyrics, you're good, or even with the same lyrics, but the melodies are all over the place, you're gonna have a lot of trouble following along. And you notice here, he's, he's spending a great deal of time on like four lines, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. Curialeson, Christialeson, and it's it's a four minute piece. So it's almost, you know, you can think of it almost as if like it's a mantra, almost like you're you're reciting the same very basic material with the idea that that people who are listening to it are going to take time to reflect on that. Well, these words are being repeated over and over in such a beautiful setting. I wonder what those words mean. I'm going to reflect on those words. I'm going to meditate on those words. These are holy words. There you go. That's the whole thing. That's all that Palestrina wanted to do. And Palestrina was beloved and accepted for that. And his music still resonates and it's still performed in Catholic churches. And polyphony was saved.